Hi, in this video, I will show you how to solve the maximum product subarray. The question says, given an integer array nums, find a contiguous nonce empty subarray within the array that has the largest product and return the product. It also explains to you that the subarray is a contiguous subsequence of the array. So that means it should be two times three, six. But if you times it by minus two, it would be minus 12. So that will be too small. But then you cannot do two times three times four, because then that's not a contiguous array. So the number is two times three, which is six. And that's the whole point of the maximum product of a subarray. So let's see how we can solve the question. Well, we can loop through the list and multiply this number by the previous number. So how can we start with this? We can say for i in range 1 len of nums, we can say that nums of i times equal nums of i minus 1. And if I do return nums, so let's click run code. I did this on purpose so we can see what's right and what's not. So here the maximum was number 6. So we just do max nums and then we hit run code. And for this particular case, we actually solved the problem. Because what we did is basically did 2 times 3, and we got 6, as you can see right here. And then we did 6 times minus 2, which gave us minus 8, right? And then, so if I'm going to re re-illustrate re this, actually the best way to do it is to print the nums for you. So here we see 2 came as is, and then 2 times 3 became 6, and then 6 times minus 2 became minus 12, and then finally minus 12 times 4 became minus 48. Right? So the maximum number here is 6. But what if this was 4? I'm going to reverse this for you. What if this was 4 minus 2, 3, 2. Let's say this was our uh, input, which is just the reverse of this. So we can do it. 4 will come down as is. 4 times 2 will be minus 8. Minus 8 times 3 will be minus 24. Minus 24 times 2 will be minus 48. Although this is the same exact array but reversed, we will see now that the maximum number has changed to 4 instead of 6, which makes it untrue. And the reason it changed is because of the negative 2. It kept on getting carried on and carried on and carried on. So to actually deal with this, we have to create a reverse nums, which is basically the num list reversed to handle this case scenario. And then we basically copy this and do it this way. And then we say, instead of the nums, it'll be the reverse nums. And then the maximum here will be will be reversed nums. So if we now run this code, we still get the right answer, but we took care of the case where the numbers are opposite. But let's see why did we add them. So I'm going to print nums for you and the reverse nums. I'm going to hit run. So I'm going to clear this a little bit. So here we see that this is when it was normal. And here is if we had the reversed. And in the case if it was reversed, the maximum would have been 4. And in the case the number was normal, it would have been 6. So by adding both of these here, I don't have the mathematical proof right on me. But we see that 4 plus 2 would be 6. And here 6 minus 8 would be minus 2. And this will be a negative number. And this will be 
a negative number. So here we're able to determine that the max number is 6. So by this way, we're able to determine the maximum product in a list for its subarray. Now another thing, what if it was, like in this case, but let's say it's positive. So instead of negative, so let's say it was 2, 0, 5, 3. So the maximum product of this array should be 15, because it would be 5 times 3, 15. Um, actually, let's even make it more difficult. Let's make it like so. So if we do, it will become 2, but then 2 times 0 would have been 0, and then 0 times 5 would have still been 0, and then it will just keep on going with zeros because you have multiplied it by zero. And if you would do the reverse, it will also be all zeros. So what can we do in this case? Well, we can actually swap the zeros with ones. So then it will be two here and two here, and this wouldn't affect the balance or the max because basically you're just replicating this here. And these ones will continue as is in their multiplication process. So let's see an example. I'm going to write an example here in the test case. So let's see. Let's change this to zero. Change this to zero and run the code. Thirty-six. Yes, because we got the we got the reverse. But let's add zero. Yes, so here you see we get the wrong answer. Uh, and that's because in the reverse, it all becomes zeros. So to deal with this, we say either it is the multiplication or one. So or one basically means that this number is not less than one. And if I do or one here too, and I click run code, then we have dealt with this when it's zero, and it simply continues as if it was one okay i hope this explanation was clear let me know um, if you have any questions thanks for watching